All right, what's up guys, Dr. Dana over here. We got Dana in the office. Dana has been coming in for about two. Six, six, eight weeks. Yep. Somewhere around there. Yep. Uh, dude has a job in Ohio. Yes. In the car for how long? Uh, two to eight hours, depending on where two, I'm going. Two to eight hours a day, right? Yep. Oh, lots of drive time. Yep, lots of drive time. What were your original complaints? Uh, lower back issues, sciatica. Down the right leg. Right? Yep. Yes, sir. How's that been feeling? Good. Improving a little bit? Yes. You're feeling your sacrum. Your sacrum's this thing. Yep. You're feeling, we talked a little bit about hip hinging. We talked a lot about wall stretching. Uh, real quick over here. We talked a lot about this, right? Just kind of, I think we ta taught you on the countertop. Yep. Can do it in the shower. Yep. Can do it against the wall. Step feet back, sink underneath it. Keep hands nice and wide up here. And then we can either A, shift the upper body, we can shift the lower body, or we can really kind of get long back through the arms like this. We can lift up through the head, and what we want to do is work on that nice big arch through the mid back, right? Yes, sir. That is something that should be done about, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. Super easy if you got a pump gas on the way to Ohio or back from Ohio, you can put your hands on your window, just give yourself a quick stretch. Don't have to hang out at the gas station for a long time, but just a little bit of time, like 30 seconds, 20 seconds while the pump's filling up or whatever. Nice, easy way to stretch the back when you've got long hours in the car. Uh, extracurricularly, you are playing... Basketball. Basketball, which we had to stop for a little bit. Yeah, yep, yep, because of the back issues, so. Back was painful. Yep. Pain's no good. It feels like, what it feel like? Like jolting pain in your low back? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was almost debilitating. Couldn't move, Oof. couldn't sit on the couch. Oof, just aching, throbbing, yep. stabbing, like radiating down into the right leg a little bit? Yes, sir. Ugh. And then going in and out. It felt like the back was going in and then would pop back out. It wasn't good. And then pain and then no pain and sometimes eight out of 10 pain and sometimes one or two out of 10 pain. Yep. But still a constant pain. Still was constant. Yep. Has reduced a little bit? It's reduced dramatically. Dramatically. Yep. And I think you've probably been in here seven-ish, eight-ish times? Yep. Maybe, maybe anywhere from six to nine, something like that. So yeah. I think we started off maybe the first two weeks twice a week. Yes, sir. And now we're down to like more weekly, right? Yep. All right. So we follow up usually a typical treatment plan in our office is like twice a week for the first two to four weeks, depending on how... Uh, kind of like messed up stuff is. Um, if you do your at home work, you get better quicker. You go down to once a week real quick. Definitely follow through once a week for anywhere from like four to six or eight. Some people once a week for 12 weeks, depending on how well they're doing extracurricular outside work, right? Um, neck over here on the left is where we feel right there. Yep. We've worked on that a little bit, right? Yes, sir. This, all, this will be a little bit of different chiropractor talk, right? Different chiropractor talk. Some people use x-rays to shoot this radio, uh, radiation through your body and see where your bones are crooked at. And then they point it out. Oh, gosh, you need chiropractic care. Your neck is crooked. And we might do one x-ray in like 100 patients that we might suspect severe arthritis or something like that. Or if we want to just, if somebody's got a long history of trauma, might just want to x-ray just to be safe, to make sure that there's not something else going on. Uh, our practice, me personally, I know your neck's crooked. I feel your neck's crooked. I feel how jammed up you are right here. Yep. What do you feel this as? Uh, it feels like a pain in the neck. <laughs> okay. get, get your finger out of yeah. my neck. Yeah. No, <laughs> because we have to get the finger in the neck. We have to get the hand in the neck. We have to reduce the soft tissue inflammation, irritation that's present around the vertebrae, the muscle imbalance from the left side and the right side, up through the skeleton, uh, and the soft tissues cover the bone up. So if we were shooting x-ray, we're definitely gonna see that your neck vertebrae are not in correct alignment, and maybe your curvature of your neck is a little, a little decreased. Some people have a, what's called a reversed cervical curvature where you uh, your neck's supposed to be a backward C like this, but it turns into a forward C. That can happen from whiplash and car accidents and just general slip and fall trauma. Or maybe it just happens from poor posture. So if this dude sits forward and he slouches all day long, his neck gets wicked tight, just like you see his skin get tight. But 
Dana already knows because we've talked about back chain dominance. We've talked about palms down and back. He knows how to prime his brain to set a little bit of activity here. So you drive a lot. Not everybody drives as much as this dude does, but like two to eight hours a day, that's a long time in the car. You have a choice to either lean your seat way back and lean into your right shoulder and drive all kinds of sloppy, or we can set our seat up to like 90 degrees, keep you know both hands on the wheel for the most time, or right hand up at two, one, two o'clock, left hand up at one, two o'clock, both hands up. If I, Pretend like your hands are on the wheel. And if you grip lightly into your wheel and you pull forward against it, nice, this is such a great, now if you're turning down the turnpike, it's like lean and turn, and lean and turn, okay? And as you lean, you're thinking, squeeze your right shoulder blade down. And as you turn to the left, you're thinking, lean your left shoulder blade down. You can get such a killer back workout in the car by doing four things. One of them, and I'm gonna play the steering wheel position here. So I'll grab my hands like this. So if I say push into my hands forward, not yet. <laughs> now pull shoulder blades back. Nice. Now stretch neck a little bit. Nice. Focus on this hand pushing into my hand. And just kind of like drive and wiggle that neck out. Feel how that pulls up into yep. that left side? Yep. And now focus on the neck over to the other side. And just, you're pushing forward lightly into the steering wheel. You're still maintaining control of the car. But you're also doing a little bit of mobility work because the dude's already in the travel most days for yeah. a long period of time. So likes to play basketball extracurricularly, now pull back, nice. And now you think, can I really wing those shoulders? And then same thing, next stretch, next stretch. And if you're turning, you can focus on left elbow down and then yep. right elbow down. Now if I say, and this gets a little hard here, pull apart, correct. And you're gonna feel same thing if I say right, yes, nice. And then other way. So there's four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. And now push in. Oh, nice, push in my hands. Make sure your tension's not in your neck, but down in your lats. Lower your right shoulder down. Oh, good. Feel oh, that's a nice yep. power. Now, if you twist it, oh, nice. Now, twist it. That's how you're going to learn how to feel your muscle imbalances in your spine. You can also wiggle your neck out or drive with your head a little crooked left side or right side. But the four cardinal directions, push forward, pull backward, push inward, or pull outward, right? And those are four things that if you can just use that nice wheel in the steering wheel, and then you can start to get into some coil like that. Yep. Now, quick discussion uh, for anybody that drives the Turnpike or 80 or any of those open highways, super good to set cruise control as much as you can and start to think because most driving posture is right foot on the gas, right foot turned out, okay? And then the knee collapses and then we get all this right side jammed up low back pain. So as much as you can on the Turnpike and on 80, you wanna go cruise control and you actually want to kind of set on the outside edges of your feet a little bit and just make leg work as you drive a little, little bit more normal so you can just gently, and we've been working on this with Dana, to stretch the ankles and the feet out. And if I say, let's focus on the right foot and just kind of push down through it, you'll feel after a period of time, and it might be 20 seconds or it might be 10 seconds or it might be a minute or so, you'll start to fatigue these leg muscles, yep. okay? And this is, the nice, this is the nice stretch for like the peroneal nerves, but also it helps you to get up into your sacrum as you drive and you can push left hip back or you can push right hip back. And now you can start to focus on the wiggle through the pelvis and you'll start to notice how you can really get that right side to like loosen up and adjust sure. a little bit, okay? All right, let's go back, finish on that left side neck. But that's our steering wheel discussion, four cardinal directions that you wanna think about. Push forward, pull backward, press inward lightly against the steering wheel. It's not a uh, 10 out of 10 press, it's just a one out of 10 soft as smooth, smooth as strong press. So you can really tune in to your lats, your mid back. And these muscles right here ultimately kinda cross body and they become this low back and you'll start to feel how you can loosen up and take control of your core. You can loosen up your back, take control of your core. And get great. Oh dude, when I drive over to Philly or New York or wherever I gotta go, I can work out in the car for like six hours and you get out and you feel super refreshed and yeah. back chain dominant. But we're still working. He's got some junk up here in this left side neck. And then we come down a little lower, feel the tension spot, yep. right? Yep. Some people call them trigger points. Some people call them myofascial adhesions. Some people just call them muscle strains, right? The diagnosis is just like contracture of a muscle. But we don't like to think about diagnoses because we don't want to tell people that they got all these problems that 
they have to think and then they got to talk, start talking to their friends about, oh gosh, I have neck arthritis <laughs> or I got contracture of my shoulder. I got sciatica. I got all this stuff. Did you do any Googling or anything when you, when you... Oh, always. Uh, always. Web what? And, web and these, what everybody goes to. Web and, why does my back hurt, Google? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, I actually know what Google says to that. Stretches, all sorts of stuff that they have on there now. Yeah. It's, it's somewhat detrimental to uh, people. Oh, all the time. Oh, gosh. I, it could be a tumor. Oh, yeah. It, everything always goes to, like, tumor. Yeah. Which, Tumor, cancer, Tumor, buddy. cancer. Consult your PCP. Exactly. P pain shot, cortisone injection. Take these NSAIDs. Uh, you keep taking stuff and you don't fix the actual issue right here. Yep. Oh, dude. It, it just becomes lifelong. And then it's like, just lean your head to the right. Lower this down and back. Oh, nice. Now pull strongly over that way. And now turn your chin up to the left a little bit like that. Oh, nice. Breathe in through your nose. As you exhale, engage both. That means lower shoulder, pull neck, open this side up. Reach your jaw. Your, oh, see how you're shaking in there, dude? Yep. That is where you got to go. He's tapping in up into his neck. You guys have heard the term tap in. Tap into the nervous system. Tap into the core muscles so that you can get the, ex, the exterior, the more superficial muscles stretched and the deeper muscles active. He is tapping in right now where he has a little quiver in his head and neck. What if I say tuck your chin back lately? Nice. See how that quiver is in there? Yep. Breathe in. As you exhale, increase that tension, pull back, stretch, that is correct. So if we want to reduce your neck pain for good, which we want to do, because we don't want you to have lifelong problems, we want you to be uh, you know, feeling great longer periods of time, come into the office less because you're busy. He's already spending two to eight hours, plus he's got a couple kids and a wife and a life and all this stuff. So coming into the office, I'm already running behind today. You know, It's like an hour out of your day. You got to stretch your neck a little bit, then all of a sudden you stay... Oh, dude, I can get my neck to like loosen up a little bit. And then we cut you back. Cool? Yep. Go face down. All right. You played, we're going to talk a little bit while you're down, then I'll shut up. You yep. played basketball in high school, college? Uh, high school, no college. No college. And now kind of extracurricularly, right? Yep. Ever since. Ever since. Like a men's league? Yep. So, for... For this guy right here, we have to, we're going to talk about the rocker on video today. Okay. Because something we want to see, he already knows about his foot squeezes, he knows about his toe stretches, which everybody, all humans have to live by. And if all humans lived by this, we'd have way less back pain, way less sciatica, way less pain scripts, medications, whether they're doctor prescribed or over the counter, which take the pain away temporarily, but then you gotta keep popping them and then you just keep numbing your body to the pain. Our goal is to put you in tune in your driver's seat. You are the person, your brain is the person, your body is the car. And when your brain, when your driver knows what to do, we start healing the body with correct movement. So his toes aren't super bad. How's the ankle feel here? Good. Not bad, right? Not bad. What's burning? Uh, right now, probably thigh the front thigh right yep. would you say it's more up in the front of the hip or the down by lower the, down low by the knee right yep so this is where guys long term over the next you know two months we've already made pretty good progress because he was really tight before which has helped to relieve some of the jamming uh, pressure pain compensation irritation up here if your back's real jammed up oh, sometimes you can't even sit up and walk or sit up and stand barely walk and sometimes it might not be so bad but we definitely want to see long-term health for him our goal is in a couple months time frame to get his heel to touch his butt which is going to take us a little bit because there are years of front chain dominance knee tension Overactivity, brain, neurological overactivity down to his quads, down to his front chain, and back chain weakness. Push into my hand here. And if you know me, I don't like weakness. Stop. Words can be weakness. Actions can be weakness. Body positions can create weakness. Push. But you have a choice every day to A, relax your foot, stretch a little bit. B, be mindful, push. 
Strengthen would be whole way down, relax. C, there we go, one more push. And stop. One more push. And stop. What do you notice about this leg though? Uh, looser. Push. See how that feels. Relax. Let's see if there's a little difference here. Push here. What do you notice now? This side is stronger. Yep. Way stronger, right? Yep. More grounded. Feel how stable this is? Yeah. Relax. Let's notice this leg again, which I'm gonna just do it first here. Now push here. Feel how there's a short circuit, a little yeah, quiver. A little quiver. So you would say this leg definitely now feels a little, little less active or yep. maybe a little weaker, right? Yep. So the right side is the tight side. He comes in as a new patient. He's got all his pain down his right low back and right hip. But we know his left side next jammed up. Relax here. Did you come in with left shoulder anything or no? You didn't? No, it was, uh, I had left knee uh, surgery in August. Okay, for what again? Uh, meniscus there. Meniscus. So we just got that thing to adjust nicely, which relieves pressure. But he does have some weakness in the left leg. And sometimes when we undergo surgery, or maybe even prior to surgery, the, the left leg was already weak. The knee bones don't, they're not locked in well. Twist the right way when you're playing basketball, or how did you tear it? Uh, I did it doing some aggressive running back. Back early last summer. Year. Yep. Yep. And so maybe he didn't know when he was running that his right leg was his power leg, his left leg was a little bit weaker, and you know, things get tight up here to compensate. Your gait gets a little imbalanced. That's what we do over in the Gym B Fitness, is where we look at your gait, your walking pattern. Because every step matters. And stepping outside edge, you know about straight feet. We've talked about the first couple appointments. Yep. Talked about hip hinging the first couple appointments and stretching the low back out. Dude's just got to work a little bit over the next couple of weeks and next two, three months to keep getting his low back less tight. And when it becomes less tight, his core becomes more active and vice versa. More active core means less back tightness. And then hopefully we keep it because we learned how to stretch in our hip hinge and our back chain. He knows about palms down and back. He's been nailing that. That's allowed his shoulders and his thoracic spine to open up well. Definitely still a little tone tension in the back. So let's see what this right side vertebrae. How's that feel right there? A uh, little bit of pain. A little bit of sw a little bit of pain right there. Yep. Or not? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any pain like? Yeah, maybe a little, little bit, bit or right not through so there, bad. yeah, not so bad. But definitely right here you yep. feel. So yep. he's still got, ever since day one, and we've seen him six to nine times, I forget. But we've seen him a few times, and I feel with my knuckles down here, he's got some inflammation in between his vertebrae. Would you agree? Correct. And definitely still a little bit tighter on the right side. So the driving exercises are more directed, the steering wheel stuff that we just talked about, more directed to the neck, the upper body, the shoulders, and the mid-back. But as you get in tune with how you can coil and twist against the steering wheel, you'll start to feel how you can really take control of these low back muscles and start to get this low back, this lumbar vertebrae right through here, these couple of them, to loosen up and stretch out nicely. Now we're going to do a little hypervolt around the right hip.
our left here. And how we, t how I typically treat with the hypervolt, kind of like right around the origin, the top portion, it's called the origin of the glute med, the glute min, the glute max, just the whole gluteal complex right around the sacrum, up around the iliac crest, which is right up through here, down into the sacrum, down around to the greater trochanter. If your hips are tight, you can have SI joint pain, you can be diagnosed with an SI joint sprain. You can, if it gets bad enough, long enough, you can get hip bursitis, which is where you've got significant swelling into the hips. Um, most, most of the time, cortisone injection, people get, oh, my hip's fine. And then it comes back or it becomes the other hip. So muscle pumping, boom, 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 boom. Hip stretching, rocking. Definitely we're gonna go through the rocker today with this bro. Get him to rock out his legs a little bit. Recommend that he does the rocker for a couple times a week, a couple sessions a week for 10-ish, 20-ish, 30-ish minutes. Saturdays are my great day at home. In the morning I wake up, we just hang out in the living room and I'll do 30 or 60 minutes tomorrow of rocker position. Now deep inhale, exhale down, shoulders relax, whole way, one, two, breath in. And exhale down, relax mid, nice breath in, and exhale down, nice big movement today, dude. Chin back a little bit, just relax head. Now we're gonna try to hit this left. All right, now right on the right side. Nice work in the CT junction today. Right side up over to the window for me, big man. We've had a little movement. Or not a lot, I forget. As far as? Low back movement? Uh, yeah. A little bit? Yeah. In there. Breath in, exhale out. Whole way, roll open. All right. Other Sometimes I'm, you guys are new, body's stiff, muscles are tight, you're not stretching the way that I want. Everybody's a little different. I think that our system works great. The way we educate, you guys see the videos on ex or the exercises on video. Breath in, exhale, roll, whole way out. One, two, flat on back for me. And sometimes side to side, we might get a little more than a little more on one side versus the other side. So long term goal is to get both sides evenly. It's amazing the amount of patients, people that come in and say, "Man, I was going to another chiropractor. He could always adjust my one side, but not my other side." And that happens if your spine's a little dominant one side versus the other side, and some joints are looser and some joints are tighter. And so what we want to do long term, balance out. Nice body. Balance out the left side and the right side so there's not a favorite, there's not a dominant. Non-dominant equals dominant, right? Meaning left hand equals right hand, left foot equals right foot. Foot, nice, and now foot here, relax. Nice, all right, now I gotta scoot you up on the table, so I'm gonna lower okay. this down. Scooch the whole way up towards the top of the headrest. A little more, so yes, correct. Uh, one more, even if your head's right at the top. Good, because this table doesn't have a foot extender. There goes another foot. So pelvis is still a little crooked on the left side, bro. Yeah, one more here. Relax this ankle for me. And long term, we gotta get both ankles to loosen up. How's this feel on the right? Uh, a little Tender tight. Enough. A little tight. Yep. How's this feel on the left? A little, little tender. A little tender. Yeah. Always. Feel yep. how that's sore. Yep. This side's a little more mobile. Yep. You okay? Yep. Yeah. 
How's this right ankle foot feel? Feels no issues. How's this feel? A little pain on top of the foot. on the left ankle. Yep. All right. So, do you ever remember spraining your left ankle? Uh, I actually fractured my left ankle severely back when I was probably 19, 20 years old. And playing basketball. Playing basketball. We may have talked about that one or two appointments, three appointments, I don't know. Sometimes I don't always read your note, right? Like sure. We talked about in yep. the past. So, but we know that this feels like this and this does not feel yeah. like I can feel it. He knows it. He yep. knows he had injury. I didn't know he had injury, but I feel the injury. And then how long ago was that? Oh gosh, 20 plus years ago. 20 plus years ago. So this left ankle is still disrupting his body meaning he's got compensations from a stiff left foot and stiff toes on and both feet. Both of his feet are still tight. They've improved dramatically since we started, but we still feel that, feel how this feels here. Yeah. That's cake, right? Yep. Feel how this feels here. Oh, yeah. What does that feel like? Uh, not good. Not good, yeah. yeah. So his second, third, fourth toes on his left foot have irritation, inflammation, mobility. I can feel a little bit of stiffness here versus here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hyperload a little bit. I want you to just think gently, squeeze toes down. Focus on right foot. Focus on left foot. See how this side, yeah. what, what, what do you say? Oh, there's shakiness. Yeah, shakiness, weakness. weakness. Yep. Right side. How, if you were to grade this connection out of 10, what would you grade the right at? Eight out of ten, ten uh, eight, out of ten. Yeah, eight, ten. How about yeah. the left side? Like four or five four. out of ten. Yeah. Noticeable weakness. Did you know your left ankle was weak? Uh, not really. You knew you had an injury yeah. to it, but you didn't know how it affected your neurological system. Correct. Your neurological system is your brain's ability to talk to the body. Cool? Yep. We have to talk to the body. You know how to talk to your upper body well. You've been doing that with your palms down and back work. Relax this. I got cramped. All right, you cramped it. Cool. Yep. So we hyperloaded the foot. We hyperloaded the plantar fascia. He's all jammed up in his right side low back. That's where his primary issue is sciatica. But it's not really his primary issue. His primary issue, it might be his left side neck. We know his left side neck's jammed up. But now we know from today's appointment, and we probably felt this, I probably talked about this on some other appointments, about the left ankle, if I felt it. Did I mention it at all? No, Never. this is the first time we've really focused on it. Uh, uh, yeah, so sometimes we just treat the area, the primary area more. His low back adjusted a little bit on one side, not the other side. Even just laying here, if I were to say 10% uh, thought of light down here. Uh, just, the, yep, like that. Now, if I were to say kneecaps open a little bit correct and compare left kneecap and left foot to right kneecap and right foot and open your right knee a little more and you may notice ah there you go now if i say forget about the feet focus on the knees think left kneecap open a little baby bit right there and now right kneecap what would you say is different left side versus right side this side's Weaker. <laughs> Left side's weaker too. Yeah. Okay. Squeeze toes down gently. Twist knees open lightly. Soft is smooth, smooth is strong. This is the thing we got to realize because so many times people come in, they're going to PT and they're doing these ridiculous banded exercises or Cairo or whatever, and they're doing stuff quickly and fast. They're not soft as smooth, smooth as strong, which is focused from zero to a hundred. Cool. Yep. You have to be a good driver at zero. You have to be a great driver at a hundred. You don't want to be worse than any speed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're still going to get into an accident if you're, if you're just bad. So we focus at zero, which would be just rested. And now you're just dead, right? We'll just say yep. you're dead weight. Yeah. Now we'll say 10% on. Nice. And, you're going to, and you can already feel the left twitch at 10%, right? Yep. And then if we think 20% through the feet, and we compare right foot at 20%, or left foot at 20%, and now we say 40 or 50%, on the right and on the left. And then we'll say, let's go straight to 100% on the right, as gripped as you can. Squeeze, 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 squeeze your right foot. Nothing else in your body. Squeeze, squeeze. is your left foot cramping already or not really? No. Squeeze your left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot. Feel that quiver in there? Yeah. All right, relax for me. So when you go to bed at night, you're gonna play the game of zero to 100. Okay. Which is gonna be maybe a minute of 10, 20%, a minute of 20, 30, a minute of 50, 60, 
the whole way up to left foot squeeze 100%, right foot squeeze 100%. You're going to start to realize how strengthening, uh, excuse me, strengthening the left plantar fascia is actually, there it goes, the toe. Strengthening the left foot is going to help, let's see, oh, there goes the foot, bro. One more here. All right, we got both feet now after we did a little plantar fascia activation. Strengthening the left foot is going to help you with your right side low back pain. Second thing, push heels down. Hold right there. Focus on your heels only. And now set a little focus down into your feet doing this. Correct. See this guy wiggle down here? No. Yep. Now, double heel press, double knees open lightly. And just focus on how the right knee opens up and the right hamstring activates or the left side. Whatever side is the weak side is the side you focus on. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. A little bit of toe grip now. A little bit of right toe grip for maybe 30, 20 seconds, 40 seconds. A little bit of left toe grip. A little bit of left toe under like that. Oh, good. A little bit of left, right up into there is where you're going to... That's going to get you a sweet, sweet, sweet power cramp and start to rehab your foot the right way. Yep. Okay? Super simple. There's higher level exercises. You can sit in the car and stretch your ankles out. Is that cool? Yep. Next appointment, please remind me to talk about finger work. Yes, yeah, sir. Roll this open. Nice. And here. We know his back chain up in his body is, uh, up in his upper body is doing great. His thoracic spine adjusted better. Yep. And let's see this, a little tight on the left, nice, nice hands here, big man, shoulders open, now the, now the money up in the magic and the, all the fireworks right here, one, here, one more on the left, let's go a little, relax your left, no, I'm not going to get any more. All right, sit up tall, bro. Already, we saw him already readjust himself and lightly set himself into the back chain. Stand up, come over this way. And, oh, all right, now hands on the floor. And what I want you to do is look through your knees, make sure your big toes are touching a little bit. Nice. Now all I want you to do is sit back lightly into it. And now what you're gonna do for your knees, especially the left knee that had surgery, might be sore down here. Yep. And what you got to do at home is start to rock right, rock left. Now, when you're on the left, bounce forward, backward 10 to 20 times. Okay. Nice and smooth. And you're going to feel how jammed up and tight that, mm -hmm. that knee is. Yep. Go back over to the right side. Would you say right is more painful, less painful? Less painful. Less painful. Yep. So this is definitely post-meniscus surgery, uh, three, four two, three, four weeks after surgery, it's like if you want to not have scar tissue, fibrosis in the knee, we got to start to slide and glide like this. Okay. And this is really, we have the femur, we have the tibia, and the femur is the long bone, the tibia is the, the knee bone. And this is helping to create a little bit of like good movement into the knee. And then if you want to just take a rest and think, oh, nice, pull that shoulder blade back, now cut left, cut right, right? And just kind of lean into it, lean into it, right side, left side, okay? Be real soft, but strong up in the mid back, the scapula. You might want to hold that and straighten the elbow up on the left. Correct. Now try to tuck the elbow. Yes, correct. Now sink into it. And if you want to, and now really kind of power up, load that for a little bit, and then load over to this right side. Keep that right thumb down. And that's going to be something we're going to work on on the right side is the fingers we talked about, because your left hand gets a little flatter than your right yep. hand does. But what I want you to do, you can either slide, glide, upper body, or else kind of lock out the upper body and just slide, glide, lower body. Is that cool? Sounds good. Now, in this position, we have six points. Two feet, two knees, two hands. Let's go to five points. Pick up your left knee. Lift your head up, chest up. Hold that for a little bit. See how that's tough? It's yeah. like core work. Now pick up right knee. Feel the top of the foot push into the oh, ground. Yeah. Okay, now do left side. Now, you may have pain on the top of the left foot if you... Or maybe it doesn't really feel like anything, but let's just smoothly work into this. Okay. So that we can start to cut the hips left and right. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now, next step, because we didn't cover the next step on the one appointment when we did this, walk your hands so that they're straight over this side. Slide way over to that outside ankle. Rock forward, backward, and 
spend time back in that left hip corner, which is your left back pocket you should feel. Oh, and yep, knee right. just popped. Knee just popped <laughs> yeah. a little bit. There it Do goes it again. gently, right? Soft is smooth, smooth is strong. Anytime it cracks, it is, honestly, it sounds crazy because they don't teach this in school, but I believe it's, ne it's bad energy, it's negative energy, it's tension. And when you get a cavitation, it's like a cavitation is an adjustment, it's a release of pressure. So you depressurize your knee, you get blood back into it, you get health back into it, and then it loosens up. And, but if it stays stuck for a long period of time, well, bone develops, the soft tissues tighten up, and then, you know, five years down the road, you got arthritis. Sure. Right? Yep. So I'll listen to this, Brie, and this is how we get into it, because I know I coil. And I gotta go this way. Then I gotta go back here. Then I gotta load out of it or out of it. And then you can start to just wiggle your tail like a dog, right? Yep. Side to side. Okay? So I want you to come out of it. Hip shift over one way. Oh, nice. Sit right there. Sit back into your right pocket a little bit. Lift head up, chest up. Focus on the right top of the ankle, pushing down into the ground. Let this shoulder release. Nice, dude. Feel that nice low back stretch? Yep. Now shift hips way over to the left hip. Walk hands if you want to. Let that back elbow release. All right. Make sure you breathe in, breathe out. Find that tension back in your spine that you're torquing and twisting. And then back to center. And then just rock it out gently. Nice. Do 10 minutes of this. Walk to the left, walk to the right. Come up and out of it over here a little bit. Come up and out of it over here a little bit. Sit back into it. Here goes more. And then you start to get that low back. Just boom, boom, boom. Sure. Cool. Appreciate it. Yo, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. So doing great overall? Yes, sir. All yep. right. Good. If you got back pain, sciatica, do your rocker. Try to find a good chiropractor, good treatment. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Peace.